All right, here we are. We have finished verse 14, which I have learned recently from posting the video from last week. We're on verse 15. So, um, so this pakad we've talked about, okay, it has a general idea of coming to visit either to appoint to a position or to punish or what else? To bring a reward. That's right. It's not to sit down and have tea. And this is going to visit her. That would be who? Who is visiting whom? God is visiting Gomer. Yemei Ha-Ba'alim. The days of the Ba'alim. What Ba'alim is it? There's a Ba'alim that she's worshiping. Asher Taktir. So this is, if you've been reading along in Exodus, you know this word. So we're going to go to Shemot, Kaftet. Pasuk Shmona Esrei, talking about some <coughs> sacrifices. So this is the verb. I think it usually appears in this binyan, which is he feel. We're down to almost the last one. <laughs> and it has to do with to burning, right? We're talking about something on the Mizbeach. What is the Mizbeach? The altar. The altar. What are we putting on the altar? The ayil. The, the ram. The whole ram is on the, um, on the altar, Olahu, complete burnt offering. It's going up in smoke. The Yehovah, Reach Nichoach, pleasant aroma, pleasing aroma, right? Reach is a smell. Nichoach is, I guess, pleasing. And then it says Isha, but it's not an Ish and it's not Isha. It's an Ish. It's from the fire, okay? It's got a dog Ish in it that helps you. Okay, it is a fire to Yahweh. It is. So we have this used with respect to uh, sacrifice, hiktir, uh, paraglamid, pasuk shiva. So you have a hiktir katoret. Hiktir katoret. So what is he burning here? Incense. And it's katoret samim. Samim is the, translated as the sweet incense. Or what else? It becomes connected to drugs in modern Hebrew. When he is... Hetiv et hanerot. So what is hetiv from? Tov. Good. What does that mean? It's gooding the nerot. When he's tending to the menorah. It's like when he's trimming them. Uh-huh. When he's doing, trimming his job for the menorah, then yaktir renna. He will burn the incense. One more we'll see in Yirmiyahu, way at the other side of the book. Memdalad. Yirmiyahu, Memdalin, Shmona Esrei, another Shmona Esrei. This is a wrong complaint. Min Az. Min Az. From when? From then, yes. Chadal is to cease, to stop. Okay, what did they stop doing? Likater, what binyan is that? It's the infinitive, what binyan is it? It is PL. <laughs> It is P.L., right? Le daber, le kater. Who are they burning incense to? The queen. Hashemayim. <laughs> the queen of heaven. They're complaining. Things are not going well. And they're saying, oh, well, we stopped burning incense to the queen of heaven. Mm-hmm. And also, we are no longer hasech. Is, is, <laughs> is to pour out drink offerings. Okay, so then we're not burning incense. We're not pouring out uh, incense. Do you remember chaser? What is chaser? Do you know it from your from your vowels? Your cholam malay and your cholam chaser. The cholam malay is this one. The cholam chaser is this one. It's lacking, right? It's, it's, right. Yahweh roi lo echsar. I will not lack. So what are they complaining? What is lacking now since this has happened? Chaser nuchol. We don't have anything. Everything's lacking. And the cherev, the sword, and the ra'av, the famine, hunger, tamnu, are, are finishing us off. Haktir is not only to burn incense to Yehovah, to God. It can be burned incense to anybody, anything. And also the idea of the... Because when you burn incense, it's entirely burned up. Right? You don't just burn a half incense and then take it out again. <laughs> Offering on the Mizbeach, you might just cook it and then distribute the meat and so on. Right, But an Olah is entirely burned up. 
So it has that idea of burning something entirely up. Hosea 2.15. He's talking about the days of the Baalim. Well, God is talking about the days of the Baalim to Gomer. She's burning incense to them. So he's going to show up because the days of the ba- uh, for the Baals that she burned incense to. Ta'ad Nizim. You remember Nizim? You remember Nizim? The rings. Very good. Okay. So Ta'ad, last week we were talking about a day, the jewelry. So this is Ta'ad, the verb. She jewelryized herself with yeah. rings. And <laughs> Chelyata. So Chelyata only appears in one other place. So we'll go look at it. Uh, hey, cafe. Michelet, Michelet. We're going to see about Chelyata, which is only used in one other place. Michelet. Pasuk Okay, so here's your Nezem again, your same Nezem. This is a Nezem of Zahav. And this is a Chali like this Chalyata. Her uh, Ketem is also a form of gold. It's, um, there's five different words for gold. And Zahav is the most common. And there's Ketem, and there's Paz, which is translated as fine gold. Ophir, and one other word which escapes my mind. Okay, so this is translated as an ornament. It's like a necklace or something like this. It's talking about the things are in parallel. you got the earring of gold and this other piece of jewelry, also of fine gold. Okay, and what are these things compared to? Mochiach. Mochiach is like to lead along, it's, but it's translated as um, a rebuke. Chacham. <coughs> Michacham. It's the wise man, okay? Chachma is the... Um, <coughs> Noun, chacham is also a noun. <laughs> chacham is a person. The wise reprover. Chacham, right. Because you can be rebuked and yeah. it's not helpful. Right. That's right. All right, back to Hosea 2.15. She put on, ta'ad, she put on jewelry. A nezem, her, her nose ring or her earring, and her ornament or her necklace, metelech, and she went achare. After Mahaveha, we had Veoti, I, right, me, Shechecha, she forgot Neum Yehovah. All right, he's going to visit her because of her behavior. It's not going to have a pleasant outcome. Okay, now we are on to 16. Lachin, therefore, Hine, behold, Anochi. I, and what is the root of the next thing there? Can you figure out what the root is? Pata. Who said that? Mefateha. Okay. So the root is pata. And it is related, it's cognate to patach. What does patach mean? Open. All right. Let's go to Bereshit uh, Tet. Pasuk Esrim Beshiva. These are two of the sons of Noah, Shem, and Yafet. So Yafet's name comes from this verb, Yaft. And you can kind of recognize that it's missing his last hey, which happens. So do you know how this is translated? And God will enlarge. So it's like opening, patach. Okay, he's going to enlarge the tense of Yafet, Yafet. That's his name. And he will do it. No. He's going to enlarge the tribe, and they will dwell in the tents of Shem. Okay, and Kanaan will be his Eved, his servant. Okay, let's look at Devarim Yud Aleph, Pasuk Sheshesrei. He Shamru, what kind of a verb is that? Shamar, good. What does Shamar mean? Guard. He Shamru, what does that hey tell you? Don't say he feel, you'll be wrong. <laughs> it's a command form. What gets a command form in, in the... I mean, what gets a hey in the command form? Nifa. The infinitive gets a hey. Lahishamer. Lahiradem. And the command form. It does Usually in the command form, we just drop the tav right at the beginning. But in the nifa, we get a hey at the beginning. Hishamru. Who is he talking to? Be guarded lachem. Okay, it's a little bit idiomatic, idiom- right? Guard yourself. The nifal, guard yourself. Be guarded of yourself. Pen. Yes. Yifte levavchem. 
So what happens if you enlarge your heart, if you open your heart? We don't talk about it as something will fill it. We talk about like uh, if, you, uh, if you open your mind, anything will just walk in. We think of it that way. But here it's expressed in terms of your heart. Visartem, remember Sur? Turn away, avadatem Elohim acherim. Serve other gods. Hishtachavitem, bow down, prostrate yourself to worship them. This is the idea, and it's translated actually, liftot levavchem, as to be deceived, to deceive yourself. You open your heart up and you, de- you are deceived. All right, so that's another meaning here. Malachim Aleph. So remember, this is the story. They're trying to get, um, who's going to convince uh, Ahab to go up and fight? Okay, and, and there's this whole scene in heaven. Very interesting. Who's God talking to in heaven? I guess he's got some friends up there, some council up there that he's talking to, right? And there's some spirits there. He says, who will go? And so this spirit... Yetzei Haruach, one of the spirits came out, v'ya'amod lefnei Yahweh, he stood before Yahweh, ani afatenu, I will patah him. I will open his mind till his brains fall out. (laughs) Right? I will persuade. Okay, so we have this idea of persuading by opening the mind. Oh, lure. Okay. Uh, very few people were here when we did uh, the Proverbs. We did all the evil ways in Proverbs, right? Uh, and, and the first one we did was also from this root, peti, and it means the fool. So let's look at this. Mishle, Yudalid, Mishle, Yudalid, Mishesre. And this is the idea of the first fool. And uh, I can give you an assignment to go to the website, to the YouTube channel, and go back and look at the video about the first fool. This is the first fool. This is how foolishness starts out. The guy's mind is open, peh, like your mouth, like patach, open, and anything goes in it. And he's just an open-minded guy. He's a fool. And, ya amin, amen, huh? he believes... The whole davar, every word, everything that's spoken, all these people, everything they see on the internet is true. Isn't that right? Isn't everything you read on the internet true? This is the fool. His his mind is wide open, and he believes everything. The arum, arum. You remember arum all the way back in Genesis three. It would be wise. You remember what it means? It's, it's not the the snake is arum. But the people are also a room. Clever, clever yeah. slick. Okay, the clever, like the snake, Yavin. You remember Yavin? Understood. To understand the Ashuro. This uh, Ashura, we haven't we haven't uh, used it. It means steps. Okay, the the intelligent person, the smart person, knows his own steps. But the fool accepts every word. Back in Hosea two sixteen. And God, we're, we're starting at the beginning, therefore, <laughs> behold, I will, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open her up to something. I'm going to persuade her. This is lure, right? Well, we talked about a lure. Vaholachtiha. So what does that look like? What's the root of that? Yeah. Holech. But he, who's, who's going to do the walking? Huh, she's going to do the walking, yeah. right? He's yeah. going to make her walk. He's going to cause her to walk to the midbar. The debarti, I will speak al liba to her heart. He's going to get her out of the situation she's in. He's going to isolate her and put her in a place, and then he's going to speak kindly to her. What a nice God. He's not coming down and slaying her for what she's doing, which is what she deserves and what we all deserve, right? Okay. Natati la. I will give, right? It's a reverse, reversing vav. It's conjugated in the past, but because of the vav, we read in the future. I will give to her kerameha. So I think maybe we don't know kerem. Do we know kerem? It's a vineyard. How do we know it? 
Oh, Noah. Noah planted a vineyard. Me shum. From there. And the direct object of Emek Achor. The Emek, remember Emek? is a valley from Amok, from deep. Achor. Who remembers what happens at Achor? Yehoshua. Zion. Nesim v'chamesh. Mm, bad event. After which they're very, very dead. Okay? <laughs> so this is a place of Achor. And what uh, what is happening there? Achor tanu yarechecha Yahweh. This is who who's having this little trouble here? Achan. This is the sin of Achan. Okay, and they do all those lots and they find him. And he says, Why have you troubled us? Okay, so this Achar, this root, then the place is named for this trouble. Achor is named for this place. Why have you troubled us? And so Yehovah will trouble you in this day. So there are two words for the act of stoning. One of them is ragam, and the other one is sakal. And they're, I think, pretty much used interchangeably. Ragam can also sometimes be used for weaving. The idea is the action, like a shuttle going back and forth. And that's the same action of throwing the stone. You see the avanim that are here, right? So they stone them with stones, and they saraf them. They burn them. They're really dead. And they've stoned them twice, once, <laughs> once by Regim and once by Sakal. So this is what this place is named for, Achor. Let's look at another Achor in Bereshit, Lamedalin, Pasuk Shoshim. Yaakov is talking to Shimon and Levi. They made a little problem in Shrem with, uh, because, on account of Dina. And he says, Achor tem oti. You have troubled me. Have isheni. You made me stink. He's a he's a stench in the nostrils. Be yosheva arts. Those who are living in the land, the Kanaani and the Perizzi. Ba'ani mete mispar. Few. I am few in number. Okay. Vene esfu. What binyan are we talking about? Nifa. They're going to gather. You. They're going to gather against me. And here's something horrible. You only have one letter for the root Naka. to smite. Okay? Naka. All you have is the kaf from the root. But what does the kaf do? Smack. They will smite me and they will shamad me. I will be, again, <clears throat> nifal. I will be destroyed at me and my house. Okay? So I think they made trouble for him. I don't think we can argue about that. All right, Hosea 2.17. He's going to give her vineyards from there. And the valley of trouble, Emek Achor, will be what? Petach Tikva. You should know this already. It will be a door of hope. Petach Tikva is the name of... Oh. Duh, did you go there? The ace hardware is in Petach Tikva. If you're in Israel, that could be a useful piece of information. Yes, it's a suburb of Tel Aviv. Very early settlement. The Anta Shama. What's the root? Anna, what does it mean? Answer. answer. She will answer there. And Ka Yeme Neureha, as in the days of her youth. Now, there's. Uh, I looked quite a bit about this, and some of you, I think maybe you might, might have it, the, the Leningrad people, might have it's it looks like there's two vowels on the on the on the vav. Yes. There are some that are on uh, oh. It's Okay. So it, it has an u but it also has a vowel here. So that's not across the board, but it does appear in the Stuttgardensia as a mistake, as a Katif Cree. So we're not going to read this obviously it's Uchiyom. But you know the rule for yeah. the vav before the shva. Yeah. The vav before the shva, when it means and, it gets the u. Uchiyom, and the day, alota. Her coming up, okay, it's the uh, absolute infinitive. Her coming up, me'eretz Mitzrayim. Okay, we're going to do one more verse because we know all the words. Vihaya, and will be, right, reverse it. And it will be, biyom hahu. 
day. When is the Yom Hahu? When is Yom Hahu? In that day. In, when is that day? The end times. The end times. Um, declares Yahweh. Tikri. She will call Ishi. My husband. Below Tikri. You will not call the me od anymore Baali, my master, my lord. So when you go to Israel, the women still call their husbands Baal. It, you don't hear them say Ishi. So we're looking at a change in the relationship. All right, next week. Maybe next week we can finish chapter two. We know almost all the words. Mm-hmm.